Now, the Unix infrastructure that we built, um, we have this marketing name for it called Aurora. And this is actually the last slide before I start wandering on the slide and, and ranting. Um, this is their pointy-haired boss slide. This is, this is the one that's just a high-level graph, which really doesn't tell you anything. But I want to just mention a little bit about the architecture here. We were trying to develop a Unix infrastructure that could be common to all the business units in all the locations. And the word global here is repeated, but it's not just marketing hack. That really was central to what we were trying to accomplish. We wanted a commodities trader who works in Singapore to be able to hop on a plane, fly to London or New York or wherever they got to go for a business trip, sit down at pretty much any random Unix desktop, log in and get the same environment. And that may sound trivial, but when you consider the fact that you've got you know, support groups spread all around the planet that try to keep an infrastructure like this running, trying to keep that level of commonality is a, is a challenging thing. The global look and feel is just simply referring to the Windows system we chose. We went really early with CDE and chose a vendor which has since gone out of business, which was another story. Um, we went for a global file system, uh, a common set of path names that people could use uh, for deploying applications, accessing files. Um, you want your home directory to be the same path everywhere, and with a technology like AFS, you can actually have one home directory all over the planet. That was pretty cool. Um, the global configuration database, everyone has to manage the contents of NIS maps, AMD maps, all, all the little configuration data you have, one of the common database for trying to manage this and manage all the relationships. This was successful. Now, the relevant thing for this talk was that most of the stuff we developed was written using open source software. Uh, a lot of this stuff, a lot of the management tools, DSDB, the configuration database, is entirely written in Perl. Um, uses a Sybase back end, but it, the, all the, the code we wrote uh, to implement that was all done in Perl. And those red boxes on the bottom are, are pretty relevant because this was all done in a cross-platform environment, and that was the real challenge. You really wanted to try to give the same set of development tools, the same development paradigm, you know, rules and regulations for developing and deploying software, regardless of whether you're working on a Sun platform, an SGI platform, sorry, everybody, all the AX is gone now. Um, and then the same thing goes for Linux. We we're trying to create the same environment for those developers. So really, this is where I have to get into the concept of crafting an enterprise. You don't go out and buy these things. You don't just buy components to let you plug this together. This isn't a, a mature industry like uh, construction, where if you want to put a building together, you hire an architect, they draw some plans up, and OK, look in New York City. They do this on a regular basis, and they will never stop doing it. Um, that's a very mature industry in that respect, because you know, the, the building blocks are available. To build a large technology enterprise like we've done, you cannot do it without developing an awful lot of software. Um, the only way that you can get all of these little components you buy, you go out and you buy Sybase, you buy uh, Informix, Oracle, Deep, wherever your relational database of choice is, and uh, no offense to the open source databases, we're not really using those heavily, um, and you find that they have management problems. You can't just you know, install Sybase out of the box and give it to developers and go, here, plug some scheme in and you're off and running. We had to develop a lot of tools to monitor the product, to automate you know, otherwise manual installation. Um, and just to manage the deployment of database schema from the test system to the production system and so on. All of these problems there weren't vendor tools for, so we had to code our own solutions. <clears throat> so the pattern here of the craft is you, you take these various vendor building blocks, and, and this is where Perl is always famous as being the blue language that built these together. It's no coincidence that Perl is used to write an awful lot of these tools that do this crafting. But you have to figure out how to make that product fit all the strange angles and sharp edges of your infrastructure that meet your requirements for your business. And the reality is that while you know, there may be a lot of commonality among the various Wall Street firms, what we do on Wall Street and our requirements are very, very different from, say, you know, uh, Boeing Aerospace, who's got to build jets. Now, I would argue that the Boeing engineers can probably handle it if their file servers crash they're out for an hour. Yeah, they go get coffee. You go into our trading floor and you watch our options guys. I love this. It's my favorite story for traders. This is where I realized the, the mission criticality of, of, of uh, the 24 by 7 requirement we have. The options traders will be on two phones, talking to two different exchanges, getting option prices for some option. Sub-second response time, finding out what the prices are. They're looking at monitor screens. They've got two poor assistants, I feel sorry for those people, being screened at, who each are on two other phones to two other exchanges. And these guys are making trading decisions based on the sub-second changes in the options prices at these various exchanges. And they're yelling and screaming at each other, and if you like that environment, come work for floor support. I can't handle it personally. It's a little stressful for me. Um, but if our systems go down and these guys' prices suddenly slow down by 30 seconds, or they're out of the market for five minutes, that's a disaster. That's not, a, oh, well, we'll go get some coffee and we'll come trade when the outage is over. It doesn't work that way. 
And the point here being, you know, if you code a, a, a commercial product based on the, you know, the Boeing engineering assumption, then that may not work for us. We've got a different set of requirements. And that's why you have to craft your enterprise. I, I don't think this is going to change in the near future. Well, I hope not. It's time to make my living. Um, I don't see anywhere in the commercial software world coming up with a turnkey solution that scales to our level. That just is not going to happen. So if you accept the argument that you have to craft this, then open source software has a pretty natural niche in this ecosystem. If the requirement to build a missing piece of one of these, um, this puzzle, or to solve one of these problems I have, has been met by some of my buddies solving the same problem, crafting enterprise somewhere else, then naturally, I'm going to use their solution and not do it all over on my own. Um, and this is true both for the tools that we use to build a lot of these solutions, as well as some of the solutions to problems themselves.